This video is brought to you by Squarespace. When it comes to websites, online stores, etc., there's no place to build a beautiful online presence like Squarespace. How does one even start a video about Cocaine Bear? You know what the film is. I know you've heard of it. If you haven't, man, I am so proud to be the one to tell you about it. Cocaine Bear is about, guess what? A bear that does cocaine and goes on a killing spree. The true story goes, sometime in December 1985, a large amount of cocaine was dumped into the woods by Andrew Thornton, a drug smuggler who died while jumping out of the plane due to a parachute malfunction. A bear was later found dead surrounded by loads of cocaine, and it was later confirmed in an autopsy that said bear did in fact ingest some of said cocaine. Now, that bear has been stuffed and is sitting in a Kentucky fun mall, apparently, but more importantly, it is the star of this year's new best picture frontrunner, Cocaine Bear. The film buffs up the story a bit, going into detail with what exactly happened when the bear was on cocaine, and we're gonna talk about if it all works. Since watching the trailer on stream, I have been fascinated and very curious about this movie. I'll admit, I've not been a difficult person to please recently, especially with comedies. I think I am so desperate for a solid studio comedy that even something for old women did it for me. But that doesn't mean I'm not picky, and things that rely so heavily on over-the-top, memeable humor, they usually don't do it for me. Cocaine Bear is sort of the new poster child for this brand of comedy, where the title itself is begging people to turn it into a meme, and you can't say it didn't succeed because even the guys making my Jersey Mike sub the other week were talking about it. But at the end of the day, you gotta ask, is it just a good concept? and a solid trailer, or is it actually a good feature-length film that's worth you know, existing. Even by making it blatantly clear that it is a silly, fun movie, that doesn't mean it can just get away with being bad. I will give it this. It reminds me of those creature flicks that had pretty crazy posters and titles like Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, and then the film ended up being pretty disappointing compared to what the poster promised. But with Cocaine Bear, you really get to see a bear on cocaine. You, <laughs> you can't say it doesn't deliver. Do we get enough of the bear? I guess? Yeah? I think the correct amount of Cocaine Bear is shown in the movie. I would definitely not complain if there was more, but I feel relatively satisfied, but I can at the same time say there were too many people scenes that were frankly just really not interesting at all. Charming, I guess? I thought Margot Martindale and Isaiah Whitlock Jr. both understood the tone perfectly. I also wish there was more Ray Liotta too, because he was fantastic as always, but the characters were written like worse versions of Coen Brothers characters, if you know what I mean. There were some funny lines, I'm not gonna sit here and lie, but I thought the dialogue relied so heavily on just simply yelling and talking in a silly southern accent, and also on a formula that have already been done in funnier movies. Because of this, a good chunk of it never felt all that clever or interesting or funny to me. My theater was losing it, and I felt like such a wet blanket because all I was doing was, I was just smiling. I was just grinning throughout the whole thing, no laughs. Which I know is completely subjective at the end of the day. I wish I was laughing more. It wasn't like a Thor situation where it was actively hurting my brain trying to figure out what the thought process was behind every line in the movie. I could easily see the appeal, and I was never necessarily upset about how this film went about its jokes. I just thought they were kind of easy jokes. The premise of a cocaine bear kind of does the heavy lifting for you, and it never felt like the writers went out of their comfort level. In short, this just didn't do it for me, mostly because I'd seen this style of character done better before. Really, the humor and violence works best when we know less about the characters. The standout scene, hands down, is the ambulance one with Scott Sace. It was such a classic horror setup, but done in a really funny and original way. I thought every actor involved in it just completely sold the scene, whispering bear into the stethoscope. Ugh, such a good bit. And I gotta say, I think it works because the people in this scene, for the most part, do not matter. And what I mean is that this was their first and last scene, with the exception of Marco Martindale's character. All we know is that they showed up to save the day, and now they're being attacked by the cocaine bear. Their energy is perfectly manic, and whatever expectations you have going into the scene, it manages to surpass them. Lines like, what the fuck is wrong with that bear? Perfect. Even the movie knows that Cocaine Bear is at its best when it's simply the bear high on cocaine. Even moments where the bear isn't going crazy and is just sleeping are really great. But understandably, the film wants to be more than just Cocaine Bear. Does not make sense to me, but that's what they want. It wants a heartwarming message about family and friendship, which admittedly do fit the cheesy 80s tone of the movie pretty perfectly, but still, it continuously gets in the way of the fun. Don't get me wrong, I want to see these two guys play 20 questions just as much as the next guy, but when there's a bear wandering around, around on cocaine. I 
feel like we're messing out on something here. I've seen a lot of people compare this to Sam Raimi with the gore and absurd violence, and I think it deserves that comparison, because the kills in this movie, when they do happen, are really good. Like, there's a scene with this one blonde guy in a tree, and it doesn't show where the blood is coming from, but the blood just keeps coming, and you're just like, wow, why is this so gruesome and, and great? You go through listening to him cry for help as he's stuck in a tree getting mauled by a bear, only for the scene to end with the bear snorting cocaine off his severed leg. That's cinema, baby. There are really only three moments in this movie that reach the levels of gnarliness I was hoping this movie would reach, and I really wish there was more of that. I'm like, you've gotten this far, we might as well just really commit to it. I wouldn't say it ever plays it safe, which is good, but it definitely could go even harder than it already does. Like I said, I'm having a bit of an existential crisis with this movie, in that when it was over, I was like, okay, that was fine. But then I was like, what is going on, man? You said you wanted more absurd, over-the-top comedies. You've been saying this for like a year now. You said just a month ago that you wished Megan leaned into the comedy even more, that it had even crazier kills. And then, the universe gifted you Cocaine Bear. Cocaine Bear came down from the heavens and presented itself to you, this silly, bloody piece of art. And now you're gonna tell me it was fine? What more did you want? What were you expecting from Cocaine Bear? Damn it, Carson, not every movie can be Evil Dead 2. Get over yourself, have some fun. The thing is though, I know what I wanted more of. I wanted more bear, I wanted more kills, I wanted less people. That's all really. But seeing as though this and Megan came out so close to each other, two horror comedies that feel sort of refreshing to see, I can't help but feel puzzled over why Megan still did more for me than this, despite this literally fixing all the issues I had with Megan. I think, and this gets to the root of Cocaine Bear's flaws, this felt in on the joke from the start. Cocaine Bear, just based on the title, knows exactly what it is. There's even the classic This Is Your Brain on Drugs clip at the top of the film that, I don't care what context it plays in, always makes me feel like I was supposed to be high to be watching the movie. It's a movie that's just begging to be memed on, to get talked about, to get laughed at. Even the sincere moments with the kids are sort of played for laughs. It's supposed to be funny in a cheesy way. And maybe that's the issue. It's already in on the joke, and when jokes feel that forced and presented on a silver platter in front of me, I don't laugh as much as I do when I don't see him coming. I knew what to expect from Cocaine Bear. You know it's gonna be crazy. It's a bear on cocaine! And there were exceptions, like the ambulance scene, but in short, I just really wish it surprised me a bit more than it did. I didn't dislike it. I didn't think it was bad at all. I just thought it was fine, and I was really hoping the movie about a bear on cocaine uh, was more than fine. And that's what I gotta say. Thanks for watching. Go watch Cocaine Bear and form your own opinion. And before you head out, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace. Now, Squarespace, if you didn't already know, is a place where you can go online to build that brand of yours, whether it be an online store, a blog, a portfolio, you name it. In, in short, it's just the best place to go to make a website. They have professional portfolio designs where you can create galleries for your work, as well as password protected pages for clients. I'm a big fan of their video block feature, which allows me to showcase some of my favorite videos and films and way that looks really nice. Plus, they have a built-in mobile web designer where no matter what website you make, it's going to look great no matter what platform it's on while still matching that unique style of yours. But the best part about it all is that if you go to squarespace.com slash Karsten, you can get 10% off of your first purchase. So seriously, if you've been on the fence about it, uh, take this video and this read as a sign that you should get on it and, and join Squarespace and get, get make, make a website, make it beautiful. Thanks for listening or watching. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video and I will see you all in the next one.